Hello viewers and welcome yet again to another episode of Dinner Guide. I am your host Chef Andy and today we are going to be making something quite the regular, something that most of you may already know how to do, but for those of you who may not be able may not be able to get it right, probably this is the show for you. As I mentioned in the introduction, we are going to be working with some tilapia, some brown ugali and some steamed cabbage. But before we get that far, we'll begin by introducing the ingredients which we're going to be working with to give you an idea of what to expect. So from the very front, I've got about two cloves of garlic, a small uh, knob there of some uh, ginger root. We're also going to be using some tomato paste, some mustard, pa some mustard sauce, and some teriyaki. I'm also going to be using a bit of some cabbage, about 200 grams of whole tilapia, you're also going to require about half a red onion and one red, uh, one ripe tomato. You will also require some salt for seasoning and some carrot, a bit of some fresh coriander, a bit of some ugali flour, about a cup of flour should do for this recipe. You're also going to require some black pepper corns to crush, some salt to steam with, some, sorry, some water to steam and cook your ugali in, and last but not least, some oil to fry with. But before we get that far, we're going to give you a, just a small moment to just stretch yourselves out and prepare yourself for the show. And we'll catch you after a very short break. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you missed out the introduction today, we are going to be working with some tilapia and we'll start this very, very simple process by first scaling or rather cleaning our tilapia. And it's a very, very simple process. The piece I'm holding in front of me has already been cleaned, but I will take you through the process of how I did so. So it's a very simple technique. Always begin by cutting right underneath the between or rather between the two gills and underneath your fish proceed to gut your fish which would mean remove any guts or any particular intestines that would be in there proceed to clean your fish as well and scale with a knife making sure that there is not a single bit of scale on the skin because it is not edible and it cannot also cook through and then now the last and final step would basically now be frying your fish so it's a very simple technique as I had mentioned we are going to begin the process by just coring our fish. So very, very simple technique. Always begin by taking the gills off completely and proceed to make some incisions to your fish. About three of them should do. Proceed to turn over and remove the other one as you did to begin with and proceed to score your fish once more, making three well spaced out incisions and very very simply proceed to salt your fish so one particular beautiful advantage of salting your fish beginning by that would be it actually allows for you to draw out all the moisture in your fish so you will actually be able to avoid such instances as adding your fish to your hot oil and having the oil really spark up and almost burn yourself so this is a very, very handy process for those of you who may be looking or probably wondering as to why you'd probably attempt to fry your fish and have the sparks of oil and water just steam up really, really fast. This is a very, very simple and handy technique. So begin by rubbing the salt over your fish, doing the same thing on both sides. And of course, very importantly, salt the cavity and just work your fingertips through the inside, making sure to do the same thing on both sides as you did on the outside. And now we'll very, very simply just proceed to move our fish to our hot oil. Now that should actually take you anywhere between seven to eight minutes to cook on each side. 
should allow you to clean your hands. Proceed to also just rinse your board very, very quickly. And something also to mention in working with fresh fish, also very important to make sure that your fish is as fresh as you can get it. Please don't attempt to make any uh, meals with fish that does not really have a pleasant smell or does not look fresh to the eye. It will actually really, really affect your diet. It may actually also give you indigestion or even poison you and cost you quite a bit of money getting some medical treatment. So very important to make sure, always make sure your fish is fresh. And if you are also working with frozen fish, I'll also recommend allow your fish to defrost overnight. Give it quite a bit of time to, fro to thaw right through because if you do have some bit of frozen fish or rather some ice that's stuck in your fish, you may not be able to cook your fish right through. And now proceed to just move your piece of fish around the pan. And this will just basically to make sure that it does not stick to the pan. And remember, since you're going to be turning it a few times, you can proceed to turn over for the first turn. And as you can see, the salt really just adds to the color as well, allows it to, 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 allows it to actually get a nice beautiful color over the skin. And another thing also to mention, the salt will also help the skin and the flesh to hold very, very firmly together, allowing you to present this very, very simply later on. So while that continues, we're going to proceed to prepare our other ingredients. So we're going to start off very quickly by heating up a pot of water. And we're going to move our fish to the side. And now all you need to do now is allow for that to continue cooking anywhere between three minutes on each side. Continue to turn evenly, making sure to turn at the correct time thus allowing for an even cooking. And as soon as it cooks for about 12 minutes, you can check for doneness and proceed to remove from the oil. But before we get that far, we're going to heat up some water in a pot. So I'm going to measure out about a cup and a half to two cups. And we're going to allow that to come to the boil. And once that's ready, we're just going to proceed to make our ugali. But before, we get, well, before our water is completely uh, boil through. I'm going to proceed to slice my cabbage. So I'm using just a small wedge of cabbage. If you're going to be using a larger piece, you can proceed to chop just the same. So very, very easily with a sharp knife, proceed to almost slice right through, making sure to get a nice even thickness of your cabbage. And all you're going to do now is by turning your cabbage and holding it firmly with the side of your hand, that should be able to allow you to get some nice even chunks. And it's also very important to make sure they're nice and even to allow for an even cooking as well. And now just as soon as you get to the to the stem end of the cabbage, you can proceed to just press down onto the board and very, very simply allow for your knife to continue to do everything else for you. Just to finish that small bit off. Now you can proceed to chuck the rest. And we're going to proceed to just move our cabbage to one side of our counter and as well we're going to also grate in a bit of carrot so proceed to grab your grater attachment any particular size will work for this particular recipe and just very simply by holding that against your board proceed to grate your carrot And of course, taking your time to make sure to get some nice even specks of carrot. Mm -hmm. 
proceed to do so until you get almost to the very end and you can reserve the rest of that and now our three uh, three minute count is just about already done we're going to proceed to turn over for the third and almost final time and at this stage you can lower your heat completely and also alternatively move it to a smaller burner and that should allow for you to slide in another pot to the side there and now proceed to fry your cabbage or rather steam your cabbage so very very simply a small dash of oil almost half a teaspoon very very small amount and all you're going to do now is proceed to add your cabbage into your pan and remember for the steaming of cabbage very very simple technique remember cabbage does carry quite a bit of water so you may not need any particular water for this process and just very very simply proceed to push your cabbage and your grated carrot into your pot and just proceed to remove any mess on the side and all you're going to do at this stage is grab a spoon of choice and right as soon as your pot starts to heat up and your oil just starts to melt proceed to mix everything together And now you may also be able to detect that your pot may be quite a bit dry. Our fish is now ready. I'll just slide that to the side. Now you may also notice that your pot may actually be still quite a bit quiet. You may actually not be able to hear any sizzle. So add a small bit of oil and at high heat allow your pot to really heat up. That should allow for your cabbage to begin to steam up very very quickly. And very importantly, always remember to season your cabbage. Add a bit of salt. Crush in a bit of some black peppercorns. And all you need to do at this stage is continue to toss your cabbage right through until it actually falls to about half its quantity in the pot. So you should actually start to notice that the cabbage will start to sweat out and the mixture will, will actually continue to gradually drop to the center. And now proceed to lower your heat completely and you can alternatively place a lid over your pot. It will allow for the steaming to really pick up but you can actually leave that under some very low heat. Just make a reminder to keep tossing it through. It will allow for a nice even cooking to the very end. And now just to get on with the show, we're going to proceed now to make our brown ugali. So for that you will require a wooden spoon. Probably this is the best option you may be able to use because it will allow you to really uh, press everything together and mold everything together quite easily. So very simply proceed to add your brown flour to your pot. And remember, you should be measuring out anywhere between one and a half to two, uh, one and a half to two times the portion you weighed out your flour. And then using your spoon, just proceed to break that lump of flour in the center of your pot. You can alternatively also give it a mix while doing so. And at this stage, all you're looking for is some lumps in there. So if you can still be able to see traces of uncooked dough or some flour just proceed to break that completely and you can also move your uh, your pot on and off the heat it also will help you to control the temperature and allow also for you to not burn yourself with the hot steam and you can proceed to return that to the heat making sure to proceed to mix right up until any trace of flour is completely disappeared. And 
And by this stage, your liquid should actually be completely absorbed, but your dough, will, your flour will actually still slide quite a bit in your pot. So proceed to keep folding and turning around your pot. And we can also give that just about a moment to actually just allow for the temperature to come right up to a little more higher temperatures. And we're going to proceed very simply to move our fish out of the pan completely. And remember, you may want to reserve that same pan because you will actually be frying your ingredients in the same oil. So we're just going to set that in our plate of choice and allow that to sit on the side very briefly. And now just bringing your attention back to the cabbage, proceed to mix through once more. By this stage, your cabbage should actually be about halfway cooked. That's about anywhere between three and a half to four minutes. And we'll proceed to add in our teriyaki sauce and our mustard powder. Sorry, our mustard sauce, rather. But you can also alternate for mustard powder for this recipe. Probably all you'll need to do is weigh out about a tablespoon of mustard, mix that with a bit of water. It should form a nice, beautiful, thick paste. It will also be a good alternative for mustard sauce. So I'm just going to mix that through. Of course, being very vigilant to pay attention to your gully as it continues to steam. And remember also the folding process of ugali, very handy to actually give it a few intervals to heat up. Remember the temperature will continuously drop while you fold. So you may actually want your pot to continue heating up as you proceed to do so. And now by this stage you should actually begin to get a nice beautiful smoky burn coming from your pot. More like, a, more like a cooked maize uh, aroma. That should actually be the first sign that your girl is almost done. But very importantly, always make sure to fold right up until the liquid is almost completely absorbed by your flour. And now we can allow that for just about a second to heat up while we turn off our heat completely on the other end and mix our cabbage through. So it's actually a nice beautiful aroma coming through there from the cabbage. We can now proceed to pour that into a plate on the side. Remember this will always allow for you to stop the cooking process. So very simply just scoop that into a bowl and you can set your pot aside and now your girl is also almost done just going to continue folding this and turn it onto a plate very shortly. But before we get to that point I will allow for you to take a break now maybe stretch and wind probably just have a drink or something but when we do come back i will take you to the last and final process of finishing off your wet tilapia and we'll proceed to plating don't touch that dial we'll be right back Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you just missed out on what we were doing before, we've just been working on this beautiful brown ugali and I've also got some beautiful uh, steamed cabbage here. But we're right now at the last and final process of this dish. So we'll begin very shortly.
by slicing up our onion and adding that to a hot pan. Remember, as I mentioned, same pan that you fried your fish in. Remember, there's a nice, beautiful flavor in there from the fish. And we will also combine those flavors really, really nicely to make a beautiful sauce to go with our fish. I'm just going to also chop very roughly some ginger. About a teaspoon of ginger should do. I will also mention if you are optionally thinking of using powdered uh, ginger for, for, uh, for fresh ginger, it may actually also make a good substitute, but it may not be as strong in flavor. So we're going to core out our tomato. And once the core is out, proceed to discard and begin to chop up your tomato, making sure to half your wedges once you've cut them into four and proceed to chop that as finely as possible. And for this we will be incorporating the seeds and the flesh of the tomato. Now we're going to proceed to add that to our pan. To that we'll also incorporate about a teaspoon of some tomato paste. This always helps in giving it a nice beautiful saucy consistency. And just proceed to toss those in your pan making sure to do so with a very, very hot pan. Remember, this will allow for everything to break down a little faster. And just proceed to fry everything together. Now, very importantly, proceed to season at this stage. with some salt and crush in some black pepper corns. We'll also proceed to chop up our fresh coriander. Discard the stems and proceed to add your coriander to your pan. And now proceed to fry your mixture, stirring continuously, making sure to allow your tomatoes to break down evenly. Now at this stage, we'll simply just proceed to slide our fish into our pan. And all you're going to do now is proceed to toss your fish in the sauce, making sure to scoop some of the mixture right over your fish. Of course, while pressing that over, use your spoon to just press into the fish this will allow for the flavor to really sink in nice and easy and allow for the fish to absorb the flavors nice and easy as well. Proceed to turn that over. Proceed to scoop everything onto your fish, making sure to go right around your pan. And just very simply with a spoon, proceed to coat your fish with a masala mixture. Of course, also tilting your pan will allow for any excess oil or liquid to drain to one side of your pan. Just proceed to scoop that and scoop that right over your fish once more. And you can proceed to turn your heat off completely.
and proceed to serve your fish. So I'm just going to use a pair of tongs to lift that onto the plate. Allowing it just to slide off the edge of your pan and proceed to just slide your pan right over the fish. Allowing the rest of your masala mixture to pour over the top. And now simply finish by also plating some of your steamed cabbage. Proceed to begin always by mixing through, making sure to rehydrate your mixture. And you can proceed to just scoop a nice big heaped teaspoon or rather tablespoon onto your plate, serving that towards one side of the plate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my very simple take on wet fry tilapia with some steamed cabbage and some brown ugali. I hope you've managed to depict something from the show that you can also incorporate in your very own home kitchens. And as I mentioned also earlier in the show, you are not limited to the ingredients we used. You can also be able to be creative in your own kitchen space and come up with your very own masterpiece. So until the next episode where we continue to bring you some beautiful inspired dishes from here and around the world, my name is Chef Andy bidding you farewell and see you soon.